And I just want to say to the men of this country, just shut up. When we ride at midnight to kill all men, we will spare the trans. <laughs> Rose McGowan, and I'm obviously fucking brave. Welcome to Pussies, the podcast about women for women by women men who support, support women. women. Uh, with me, as always, is Michael. Michael, hello. Well, hello, Michael. Thank you. Today, we are going to be reviewing a very toxic film, something that has um, been a real thorn in my side my whole life, actually. When I was a child, it was very traumatic to see this during Christmas. And recently, my son Allison at school, um, they were going to show the film, and I was mm. very upset about this. So I decided to go to Allison's school and have a cry in. I was um, a little intimidated by their uh, principal. Yes. And I tried to elicit the help from other parents. Unfortunately, no one showed up. So I was in the lobby alone crying. Uh, what was um, the most upsetting was I overheard my my son Allison's friend say, is that your dad in the lobby crying? And Allison said, no, my father's dead. He was a lumberjack and died cutting down trees. So that felt like a betrayal. It actually fueled me to wail even louder. Mm. Then I, after about an hour and a half, I felt I made my point and I left. Mm. And this film was still played. Unfortunately, I was oh. unsuccessful. Well, that's, uh, it took a lot of courage for you to tell that story. And I really appreciate what you at least tried to do. And we teach this at the Do Better Foundation that staging an impromptu cry in can be a very effective way to ruin a thing that people are enjoying. And today we're going to go through this film as much as we can to hopefully shed some light. And hopefully, this film will be banned forever. Okay, let's dig into Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Story of Rudolph? Well, pull up an eye. Well, and it... I think it's interesting that instead of uh, letting Rudolph tell the story, it's, of course, told from the perspective a of a, a white snowman who is uh, the narrator, as they say. Yeah, he will mansplain this entire film for us. Get away! Get away from me! Wow. And so, um, shaming the menses of Rudolph. Rudolph, of course, is a uh, what a trans uh, teen boy who has a vagina and a period. So Rudolph's nose tampon falls off, and this is where the teasing begins. <laughs> yeah! There are aspects of this that uh, do remind me of Boys Don't Cry, starring the great Henry Swank, who recently came out as a trans man and uh we support him nice around here isn't it i call it christmas town better known as the north pole north pole of course being the alpha part of the world sort of right. santa who will come in later he sits upon you know oppresses the entire world from the top and this obese rest well, it's it's you know the the most important penis in the world is the north pole of course, the number one citizens up here are the clauses, Santa and the Misses. They live right over there. Right. I guess she doesn't have a name. She's just the Misses. That is a great question. What is Santa Claus partner's name? Well, the, the subtext is it doesn't matter, Michael. Papa, you haven't touched a morsel. I'll have to take this suit in. Eat. I'm busy, Mama. So she's, she's already busy. She has so much to do. He's just sitting there waiting for her to bring her his food. I'm, I'm busy uh, oppressing. Now, don't any of you worry your heads about Santa, Mrs. Claus. It's rubbing his genitals onto the ground as we hear it scrape. We'll have him plenty fattened up by Christmas Eve. <laughs> Oh my God! Just when I thought this couldn't go any lower, uh, these two, our two protagonists, uh, are stuck in a very compromised position when they're attacked by Louis C.K. Oh my God! This is disgusting. <laughs> and then, and then, of course, the white man splainer laughing. Well, what do you think of our friend Cornelius? I think he takes advantage of an unequal power dynamic. Uh, at this point in the film where the makers of it decided to take a very cheap, very mean-spirited, and frankly, lazy 
shot at feminist icon Andrea Dworkin. I'm a bad person because I don't comb my hair. Is that what the message is, Michael? Oh, because I'm not uh, traditionally attractive in the sense of hygiene or grooming or any sort of exercise or having right. a personality. I'm suddenly not good enough. I'm a monster now. Right. I'm abominable. And just to draw almost an exact picture of this woman, change something. Why don't you hide your hide it a little bit, your violent attack? Mm. Have the courtesy to to at least slightly change the monster from the actual woman that you're insulting. My God. This uh Wait. this is played for laughs, the the patriarch of the deer using his phallic horns to mm. say, Hey, get out of here, feminism. I'm going to use my penis to make you feel unwelcome in this space. And then now Louis C.K. drops his load on her head, and that's supposed to be funny. So Santa's sack is being filled up, which will need release, of course. But before that happens, he's going to one by one call them all hoes. So now we see his uh, game. Uh, Rudolph is going to pull the sleigh while... Uh, the rest of the community works the sack. I, I think of this uh, movie as a kind of genocide. I don't think you're overstating things. Why don't we uh, read the ending, Michael, that we wrote, and just all, everyone at home, imagine this Santa going into the sky for your, for your Christmas Eve. And doing better. And doing better, thank you. On trans man, on soft butch. On intersex. And Demi Boy. On questioning. On Two Spirit. On Furry. And Gender Queer. My partner has a name and it's Wendy, and she'll be calling the shots going forward. Women, 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 and to all a good night.